Good morning, dingoes. I hope you're having a fantastic morning. I have a very exciting episode for you today. Since the price of Bitcoin and kind of Ethereum are consolidating, we are going to be talking mostly about perspective. We are going to put in some news there as well, but mostly about life perspective as well as if Ethereum's ethos, because I think protocols and developers that embody and encompass the Ethereum ethos will most likely be successful or will have a better chance of being successful than those protocols and developers that don't. And if they don't, they are most likely to fail in my opinion. But we'll talk about that more in depth here shortly. But let's just jump right into the price action. But quickly, if you aren't already a dingo, like and subscribe. It is free if you did not know that as well as joining the Telegram and Discord is also free. So why not? Just, just join the Dingo community. It's an awesome community. But anyways, let's jump right into the price action of Bitcoin. Basically, the reason why I have CoinGecko up today because it, I don't really care what happens in the short-term price action, guys. I'm Basically, there's no reason to do technical analysis right now, guys. There's zero reason because the 20-week moving average is at $20,000. We're well above it consolidating. There's no reason to do technical analysis right now because who cares about the short-term price action? Maybe it's a good time to start dollar cost averaging in. But that's about it, guys. That is about it. And now let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum is actually the exciting <laughs> exciting crypto to look at right now because we are consolidating in a very bullish pattern. And I believe, I truly do believe that February will be a very good year, a very good month for Ethereum because historically Q1 has been a very good month or very good quarter for Ethereum. Histo ever since inception, we have had a very good quarter against Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and I think we will repeat it this year. I mean, we already had a pretty good, uh, what was that, beginning of January, and I definitely could see another push like this at the uh, beginning of February, right? So. We'll see what happens. As long as we don't break below 1050, we are still bullish. I think we will hit, find some support around 1250 and continue to consolidate into the early part of February and then break out sometime within the late, late January or early, early February, right? So now let's go into <clears throat> Benjamin Cohen. Congratulations to him. He just hit 100,000 subscribers. That awesome but he says eat the wary because he's kind of thinking the same thing as i am february is going to be a very nice month for ethereum and i think it's following bitcoin's footsteps i've said this many times when it broke twenty thousand dollars and if you don't remember bitcoin did a hundred percent gains in the course of a month month and a half right so i think ethereum could do the same thing in february and we're looking for that but also one thing i want to point out with benjamin cohen into the crypto verse reaching a hundred thousand subscribers i just remember watching him like a month ago and he was at sixty five thousand subscribers right although benjamin cohen does great work mid to long-term technical analysis and data scientist i mean he's a great channel to uh subscribe to if you aren't already but it just shows the quantity of retail entering the market you guys have to if you are retail which means basically new to the crypto market make sure you are following quality individuals I mean, there's a lot of shills, a lot of people that will take the first pay promotion yet and also don't does not really understand the crypto industry entirely. And just be careful out there. That's all I want to say. And anyways, let's listen to a new guy that <laughs> has been up, but I think he has been around the crypto space for a while because he talks the talk, but uh, sometimes he's just memeing. And this is let's this is one of the times he's talking about Ethereum hitting all-time highs last night. Fucking go. Price discovery on ETH. Check that bad boy out. She's pumping. All souls clenched tight as I'm watching her rise. You know what ETH pumping means? Old season is upon us. Don't forget about good old Doge. One dollar still coming. Good enough for Elon, good enough to me. Obviously, Doge is not hitting $1. I think he's memeing. He's trolling. Obviously, if you believe him, you kind of deserve to lose your money, guys, because obviously, Dogecoin is not going to a dollar, guys. And you got to be careful. I mean, obviously, he's just memeing, so I don't... Let's I get mean, money. He's not the, the influencer that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people, the influencers that are purposely or ignorantly leading you guys down the wrong path. And I'll just say personally... I will never show you guys something that I have not w used or walked through and uh, used for a while, right? And I, I mean, I, I the only reason why I make videos is basically just because 
I do this every day anyways. I just play around with DeFi and play around with the Ethereum ecosystem and different protocols and in different Discord chats and doing research because that's what I do in the first place. So I might as well make some videos about it, right? And I would like to chit chat with some people because the Dingles community is pretty awesome. But next is some perspective is learning to unlearn. And the only point I want to bring up with this is Michael Saylor. He is relatively older and a lot of people in his in his peer group do not necessarily like Bitcoin and he might have been the first mover in introducing Bitcoin to that peer group because I mean he knows he knows how to unlearn and Bitcoin he he became aware of Bitcoin's potential and then he was not his ego was not did not blind him to the potential of Bitcoin. That's all I want to say. And once you, we get older, we have to be able to unlearn what we have learned, right? And do not have a big enough ego and do not have beliefs that have solidified to such a degree that we aren't able to learn new things, right? And increase our perspective because I do think we will have probably 25% of the population living in the matrix in 25 years, right? Because I mean, the matrix is coming, and it's going to be built on Ethereum, uh, in my in my in my head, right? And it's hard. I mean, you already can own a business in Decentraland and actually have a successful business in Decentraland, which is crazy. But now for some Bitcoin accumulation news: Harvard, Yale, Brown have endowments have been accumulating since 2019. The source said most have been in at least a year. I would think they will, will probably discuss it publicly at some point this year. I suspect they would be sitting on some pretty nice chunks of returns, guys. Endowments, pensions, uh, state pensions, um, municipalities, as well as, I mean, I mean, eventually sovereign wealth funds i mean it's just it's just a it's just game theory i mean once the first mover the first domino falls the rest of the dominoes will have to fall as well it's just game theory guys and now this is the uh rock not rockefeller is it rockefeller oh crap guys i forgot the name of it i think it's rockefeller trust it's not rockefeller though dang 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 let me go back here Rothschild guys, so they just bought more grayscale Bitcoin. Uh, uh, I think they're up to thirty thousand shares, guys, and it's an increase about twenty five percent since last quarter. So there you go. I mean, that's pretty interesting, guys. And next is just discussing about the the transfer of wealth, and I think what happened today with GameStop is kind of just showing the transfer of wealth and the because. This was, if you didn't know what happened, basically Wall Street Bets said, hey, this this stock has been overly shorted and they liquidated the shorts and they caused a short squeeze, which means the short positions had got liquidated and they had to rebuy the GameStop because they bought the GameStop shares on margin, right? So they had to buy the GameStop shares, which caused a short squeeze, which caused this huge price action it went from like twenty dollars to 110 this morning guys so huge price action and that just shows the power of the younger generation obviously the the probably average age of, age of people in wall street bets is probably 25 right so it just shows the power and the amount of money that's mo moving between the generations right now and actually and obviously younger generations are more inclined to invest in crypto so it's it's literally so obvious that the the crypto sector will in general just grow in general as well as inflation's happening so i mean there's no reason to think that the price of the crypto a lot of these cryptos especially the blue chip cryptos will go down in price there's no reason to believe that and now let's talk about the Ethereum ethos, because this is Zero X Maki, and he's a core dev for Sushi. He had a discussion when the incident happens, which is Chef Nami rug pulling Sushi back in, I believe it was late summer. He rug pulled Sushi and sold all his tokens on the market, and it was not a good thing. And this was the conversation after they decided to uh, re rebuild the project from the ground up. They didn't rebuild the project from the ground up, but they uh, rebought the tokens and they they put in the community fund, I believe. I don't know exactly what happened, but they just restarted the project, but did not. 
they did not fork. They did not fork, right? So Mick said, what's the plan now? Mackey said, I guess we need to start over again and fork. What about the community members and the holders of sushis? We can't let them down. Maki says, this is true, but you need, but you know I need to go back to my day job. I've earned nothing and I slept four to five hours a night for the past two weeks. I can't see myself going like this. Mick says, let's get a proposal to hire you full time and pursue the vision of a community let Uniswap you joined for, right? So, and Sushi Swap just hit all time highs. Congratulations for everybody working on Sushi Swap. But I just want to point this out because Ethereum Ethos, right? The Ethereum Ethos is open source, free markets, community led, um, naturally natural adoption, right? So that is Ethereum's ethos, and if the project and protocol embodies it, it's it's more likely to succeed. And obviously, if the community knows if a project is embodying that ethos or not, and if you enter a community and it does not feel like they are uh, being having integrity and just uh, being respectful of everybody's insightful thoughts and just having a good community overall. That project is not might not might not be successful, right? So that might be a red flag to watch out for. The Ethereum ethos, you need to embody it if you want to be successful within the Ethereum ecosystem. Really do. Integrity is essential for that. Do talk the talk and walk the walk, guys. That's all you need to do in life. Talk the talk and walk the walk. And now let's talk about a couple projects that I like because they hold a lot of DeFi tokens and these are DeFi indexes. I like PyDAO a lot. I do not hold DO because tokenomics issue a lot of inflation and i don't like inflation much so but they hold i mean i i'm talking about indexes quickly here because i mean guys DeFi is a very huge if you did not watch my episode yesterday i talked about the asymmetry between the zombie chains that have like 35 billion in market cap and the top DeFi protocols that do so many more uh, transactions and have a lot more money under uh, money under management kind it's tough to compare those two things but just the market cap asymmetry between the top seven d5 protocols and the top seven zombie chains is just huge and that asymmetry is going to be realized once the the money gets once the money leaves the retail hands and goes into the smart individuals hands unfortunately but that is true and i want to bring up dpi dpi because it's also a blue chip DeFi index and it's very nice if you haven't checked it out i think if any DeFi index will get institutional adoption like with a grayscale trust or a grayscale financial product it probably will be dpi even though that's several years down the road maybe a year down the road but i do believe this will be the one to get adoption and some traction within uh maybe a grayscale trust i don't know but we'll see only time will tell and now for one of my favorite perspective pieces i have brought forward to you i think this is important to uh talk about every day because once again uh, you get caught up in what you're doing and you lose sight of what's around you and what really matters right so let's listen into uh this video i also have a little thing to talk about ray dalio after this and how that all ties in or tumors in my throat. I've never seen my wife cry so much in all my life. The doctor said to me, Michael, we're sorry, but tomorrow's not guaranteed. You need to slow down. But that's one thing we all have in common because no one's guaranteed. I think that life is not about the amount of days that you live on this earth, but it's about what you fit into those days that allows you to live a remarkable life. And I remember driving home and she called me, my mum, and she said, Mike, what did the doctor say? And I said to her mum, everything's going to be okay. Every one of us, every single day, is blessed with the air that we breathe, the opportunities that we have. And I challenge you every single day to get out of bed and do something that your future self will be proud of. Unfortunately, That's the only thing guaranteed to us is a common end and I think that's really important to just understand no matter how much wealth no matter your prestige in life we all are guaranteed that one thing at the very end right so do something that's purposeful do something that's meaningful to yourself know what's 
know what holds value in your life and that's usually not money i bring this up all, every day but with us in the financial sector we get caught up in money and if we just step back and just realize the real importance of other things and the things that really matter usually usually money finds it, its way right money finds its way to individuals that don't have a tight grip on meaningless things like tight grip on money usually they lose it all if they have an open and a free hand somehow some way money always finds it in it, it into their pockets right so and now let's talk about Ray Dalio because once again back in December he lost his son to a car accident and he's a very successful investor and unfortunately he lost his son in December and no matter how much money you have you will still be left with moments like this just losing your son in a car accident is terrible so no matter how much mon much money you have we all have that common guaranteed end so that's what I'm going to leave you off with this morning I hope that motivates you but also makes you want to uh, just just enjoy what you have guys just enjoy what you have but that is all for today if you like this content find value in it like and subscribe become a dingo today and also, if you want to chit chat, I have a Discord and Telegram chat in the bio. So go check it out and chit chat with me as well as other Dingo community members. But that is all for today. Peace out. Till next time, Dingoes and Dingle Dingle.